Thank you for that wonderful introduction. My name is Phil. I work, I have an interesting job. I work as a brand strategist, quite literally all over the world. So I work with, as he mentioned, I work with celebrities. My longest project is working for a shark on Shark Tank. I just finished branding the social secretary for President Obama while he was in office. And guess what? Most exciting of all, now I get to work with you. Right? Exactly. So my goal today, my work is focused on positioning, building, and promoting brands. I'm known in particular for specializing in personal brands, but at the same time, even while I've built my reputation branding people, the irony of that is now that I'm you know, working a lot with corporations, startups, in businesses to humanize those entities and companies, which now is more important than ever. My goal, by the time we finish up here, in a few minutes, is that you have at least a handful of very tangible tips that you can go and implement from here. This relates to personal branding, building you. It relates to startups. It relates to you, even as a student, maybe nearing graduation, building proof of concept. The beautiful thing that I'll you know, touch on as I move through the presentation is that even working with the fanciest of people in this world, the art, the science, the process is still exactly the same. So the exciting moment that we have right now in Cairo, really in any city around the world, in any ecosystem, is that now geography matters less than ever before. If you need to show up somewhere in person, you hop on an airplane, as I've done here, 30 hours. <laughs> You know, now it matters less than ever before. So now we, you know, you have so much power to have control over the first impression you give others online. Now I'm very nervous that I'm not gonna get to cover absolutely everything I wanna tell you today. So what I've done, I'm a good student, what I've done is I've prepared a little fancy, beautiful workbook for you. I mean, come on, you're welcome. PhilPallon.co slash rise. If you go there, you can get the notes, all five points that I'm gonna cover today. I don't do that for everyone, okay? You're special. So let's start at the very beginning. Point number one, understand the brand. What does this mean? It means that in 2000, well, almost 2020, content is an unlimited resource. Simply creating it is not enough. The limited resource that we're all chasing is time, people's attention. So creating is just not enough to stand out. This is a theme that has been coming up throughout some of the talks that I've had the pleasure of sitting in on over the last few days. Today we're looking specifically at the intersection of growth and branding, at least from a branding lens is how I approach all of this. I want you to be thinking about your brands and let's even first start with the confusion around this word, brand. What does it mean? Well, this is confusing because it's defined by leaders and experts in all different ways. So Jeff Bezos of Amazon says, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. This is my favorite definition. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. How about this? Tim Ferriss, very popular in the entrepreneur world. He says, your brand is about managing your name in a world of misinformation, disinformation, and semi-permanent Google records. One of my joys of my job is getting calls in the middle of the night. Certain clients have their own ringtones, so I know what I'm about to get into, right? People react to the drama, to the problems, and then they launch their problems at my head, and then I charge them lots of money for that. <laughs> Right, and so reaction is not ideal in this case. Being proactive about the brands that we're building and the control we have is ideal. So we're getting closer to this definition, but it's still not exactly clear. Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook says, when we are packaged, we're ineffective and inauthentic. I don't have a brand, but I have a voice. I hate this definition. And let me tell you why. I can't get too bad. I know Facebook's a sponsor. I better be careful. <laughs> Oops. No, I don't like this definition because Cheryl makes a very critical boo-boo and assumes that brands are artificial. 
In 2020, and I love how things are evolving, it's not gonna work for you to build something fake, to build something inauthentic. So I really don't like this definition. Finally, from Gary Vee, everyone knows, he says your brand is key to monetizing your passion online. So when we take all of these definitions of branding, I like to kind of you know, take a, a piece from every single part of it and define this in this way. Your brand is the control you have over the first impression you give others. Branding, good branding, is very simple, and don't let anyone overcomplicate this for you. The best branding recreates the in-person experience. So my job, regardless of industry, regardless of country, regardless of level of fanciness, is to very simply take inventory of what makes you great in real life and find ways to recreate that online. So this comes from understanding the brand and being very focused in 2020 and beyond on providing value, knowing specifically what pain points your audiences have. Think about the answer to this question. Who is your audience and what is keeping them up at night? How can you as a product or a service satisfy that need like every good business does? What is keeping them up at night and how can you provide the solution to that problem? So I wanna talk for a second about, I'll share some of my client stories. This is a client of mine based in Norway. Adelaide came to me and she was uh, a coach. She literally came to me and said, Phil, I'm a coach. And I was like, okay, a coach in what? Volleyball? I don't understand. <laughs> and no, she was working as a, as a mindset coach working with some business clients, but it wasn't specific enough. I said, Adelaide, we're going into 2020, it's time to be specific. Geography matters less than ever before. What do you want to do? You're in the position to decide where the ship is sailing. And she said, Phil, I love triathlons. I was like, okay, didn't see that one coming. Great, she specifically loves triathlons. She's passionate about helping triathletes. I said, then go all in on this industry. There's no one else right now when we Google mindset coaches for triathletes. There's no one else in this space, so let's create it. And that's exactly what she's done. Now think about her audience, triathletes. They find Adelaide and go, wow, this is someone I didn't even know I needed. She speaks my language. She speaks specific to the challenges that I have. Boom. She acquires clients quickly, quicker than being a generalist. When we are general, when we try to appeal to everyone, we effectively appeal to no one. So I give this example as someone who took a risk, went all in, and succeeded. Number two, focus. Again, my talk today is really based on some of the work I'm doing at some pretty big levels with people on television, people on stages, in politics. The beauty of it is the work, the, the, you know, this is based on exactly the same thing. So even if you're starting out, you know, or you're changing lanes, you're changing industries, you're starting a new career, the methodologies are exactly the same. Now we're going into 2020, it's absolutely essential that you focus. Rather than being average, on 10 social media platforms, it's much better to be great on three, or better yet, be a superstar on one. I'm gonna give you another example of this. My client, Mona, who I've worked with for a few years, was pursuing TV hosting. A few years ago came to me and I helped her build her website. Really wanted to be a TV host, was working as a pharmacist, and wasn't happy. And, you know, I can't take all the credit for her success, but certainly we had conversations that led to her deciding, you know what, I need to build proof of concept. She wants to be a TV host based in LA. You know, she's going to audition, she's building her brand. Rather than waiting for someone to hand over the opportunity for her to have a TV show, <laughs> doesn't really happen, she said, well, you know what, why don't I use my social media to show proof of concept? So on Instagram was a fit for her. She's vegan, 
You know, people were asking her for recipes when they found this out, and she went all in on building her platform, one platform, not spreading her time evenly across 10 social media platforms. Here's what she did. She thought about Instagram as three social media platforms. So first, your feed, which everyone knows, right, is curated, your individual photos and how they work together on your, your feed. Second, stories. By show of hands, who's active here on Instagram? Let's make this interactive. Keep your hand up if you post at least two stories a week. At least two stories a week. Now keep your hand up if you go live on Instagram at least once a week. Hmm. I love when my experiment goes right. So what Mona did was she said, Phil, I really want a TV show, but they're not going to give me one just based on my Instagram, so I'm going to go live every Monday. Not a lot of people are doing this, but it's a good way for me to practice and show proof of concept. Mona went live for an hour every Monday, and she continues to do it. If you follow her, you'll see. She continues to do this. And she's amassed hundreds of thousands of followers. She's now on TV. And the reason she built this was because she focused on one platform, building audience and building proof of concept. It's very exciting. I encourage you to walk into rooms that are less crowded. Think about this. Let's pretend this is a room, even though we're outside. Um, you walk in, and everyone is active and posting photos and videos on Instagram. But how many people are active when it comes to going live on Instagram? There were about two and a half hands up. And still to this day, when you go live, your audience is notified. We pay for that kind of interaction on every other social media platform. So I'm here to plant some seeds to get you thinking, which rooms can I walk into that are not yet full, where you can still get noticed? Moving right along, point number three, measuring success. I love that this has come up a few times over the last few days. We can't just do, but we also need to evaluate, is what we're doing successful? So some of these are gonna be more obvious than not, but I like to break these into two categories so that you can take this and evaluate it and implement it. Two ways to look at measuring success, quantitative and qualitative. The latter is trickier. So let's look at this. First, we look at quantitative success. Again, this is more obvious. Product, service, app, subscriptions, etc. What's your website traffic? How many inquiries are getting? How many are we converting? How many followers? How many sales? These are all numbers. Again, this link at the bottom, if you're just joining us, has all of this and breaks it down for you so you can look at this. But where this gets trickier and a bit more ambiguous is how do we analyze, measure success qualitatively? I want you to take these and adapt them for your particular businesses and brands, but let me give you a few ideas. Qualitatively, we need to measure things like sentiment on social media. Positive feedback is the feedback you're getting. Constructive, positive, negative. What about emotion? Hopefully good, sometimes not good, sometimes angry. You know, trust me, working with celebrities, I've learned that sometimes it's good if, they re if people react, even if it's bad, right? Can we not see many instances of that in pop culture and politics? Hello, America, ha! People react, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But when they react, they're paying attention to you and not someone else, and that is a win, folks. Emotion. And finally, connection beyond transaction. When someone comes to me and they're trying to launch a book, they're trying to launch you know, a service, a product, something quickly. Oh my gosh, we need to, I need your help with my social media strategy. I really need to sell a lot. I'm like, oh boy, that's a red flag for me. And I'm not saying you can't sell on social media, but I'm saying that's the wrong mindset to approach. That's like me walking out here and just starting to shout at you and you going, there's a crazy man on stage that is talking to himself, you know? This is a two-way conversation. It's a conversation. Social media is a tool for conversation, not for broadcasts. It's a relationship building tool. You know, we'll talk more about this. But again, measuring success in 2020, the limited resource we're all chasing is time. When you earn someone's time, when you earn their attention, that is precious.
Moving right along, here we go. Point number four, content and keywords. I think I started this talk off saying content on its own is not sustainable anymore. Just creating content isn't enough. We need to add some strategy and very simply using a few tools, not just limited to the ones that I'm gonna give you today, but starting to think about how through everything I'm creating can I ensure that I'm more discoverable today than I was yesterday. And I'll give you some examples of this. The whole name of the game here is creating what your audience craves. What does your audience crave? What questions do they have? What are your answers for them? How are you on a consistent basis creating the answers to their questions? Because it puts your face right in front of them. Now, it can be overwhelming to think what tools can we use to find this? There are two that I absolutely love that I'm gonna show you today. When it comes to looking up keywords that your audience are typing into Google to find what they need, one of my favorite tools integrates as a plugin for Google Chrome called Keywords Everywhere. And I took this screenshot last night. Quite literally, one of my keywords would be personal branding. It shows you on the right-hand side related keywords, more than just the ones listed here. It will give you all kinds of other ideas on things that you need to literally type word for word in the content you're creating. Blogs, worksheets, downloads, ebooks, podcasts, right? So luckily we have these tools at our fingertips that take the guesswork out of this. We don't have time to guess, right? There's only so many hours in the day. So how do you be very intentional with what you're creating so that it increases the likelihood people are going to find you. So this is one of my favorite tools that I've included the link to in the workbook that I've given you. Quite literally, I'll give you an example. If you go to my site, examples of personal branding, that keyword exists written exactly that way. Exactly that way. So it could be YouTube titles. It could be, I mean, all kinds of different variations of what you're creating, again, to show proof of concept. This is one of my favorite tools. Keywords everywhere. My second favorite tool is called Answer the Public. I think Keywords Everywhere, by the way, it was free up until a few weeks ago, but now it's really cheap for like 100,000 searches or keywords. Totally worth it, I think it's like $10. This one is free, you can go there now. Answer the public. All you do is type in a keyword and it will literally give you hundreds of ideas and combinations on that topic to tell you what else people are looking for related to that category, that topic. I mean, how great is this? It gives you questions, prepositions, comparisons, alphabeticals, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds great. So this tool will give you questions that you can be answering in the content you're creating, and it's gonna help people, the right people, find you. The question, who is my audience, is something you should be thinking about every single day, and you should allow this to evolve. We as human beings evolve. One year from now, we're gonna be a different person than we are today, and that's a beautiful thing. We invest so much money and time and effort into showing up in real life. How you show up online can't be an afterthought. Your profile photo on LinkedIn shouldn't be a pixelated photo from a family barbecue 10 years ago, right? You wouldn't show up in real life to a party in pajamas, unless it was a pajama party. Show up online. You know, I would argue that you have a digital responsibility now to help achieve consistency between who you are in real life and how you show up online. The fifth tip I'm gonna give you, and then we'll have some time for Q&A, is to start conversations. This one can be uncomfortable. How do we start conversations? The first thing that you need to do is start conversations outside of your community. So outside of the people who already know and follow you. There we go. Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Notice I haven't talked about Facebook or Instagram, which are probably more obvious and within a lot of people's comfort zones. Twitter, for example, rather than tweeting about things we're doing, meals we're eating, instead, 
The most important tweet is what I call a networking effort. It's tweeting an absolute stranger, ideally with something like a compliment, so that ideally they notice you. We're not selling to them. I think of our social media platforms like an airport, right? You go up to someone, if you start talking about yourself, you don't know them, they're gonna walk away and say, okay, weirdo, you know? But if you give them a compliment, it could be a stranger, but you could say, hey, I love your outfit, I love your boots, I love some, you know, compliment. I love, I read your book, I love your perspective on this topic. People go, okay, you're a stranger, but thank you for the compliment, now I'm paying attention. I know this game from two sides. If I'm branding someone or something from scratch, right, we're thinking how do we get the attention of decision makers, investors, gatekeepers, influencers. But then at the same time, those are the people that hire me to make sense of all of this madness. I spend every Sunday night on the phone with my client while Shark Tank is airing, which makes for a very interesting viewing experience. <laughs> but I know this from both sides, right? I know what we notice, what we ignore, what we retweet, what we favorite. And so leading with conversations that are based on substance and they're not one-sided. It's a conversation. So that's an idea for Twitter. LinkedIn, I give you a template for how to direct message a stranger in a way that isn't spammy. I give it to you on this link. I don't remember it off by heart, but it's taking two seconds to read the profile of the person that you're about to message and show that you understand succinctly who they are before you message them, okay? LinkedIn is incredibly powerful for those kind of one-to-one -one interactions. Pinterest is kind of like the ugly stepchild of social media, it gets ignored. But actually, it's the most powerful for website traffic. Platforms like Instagram, they don't want you to leave, they want you to stay there. That's why there's only one place, really, other than if you have over 10,000 followers, you can get a swipe up, which is also kind of lame, to be honest. Um, people don't, they, you know, they don't want you to leave, whereas Pinterest is all about you leaving and heading to websites to get more of what you're looking for. So it's a visual search engine. So we can be using this tool, which a lot of people don't even have factored into their social media strategy, to Start conversations directly from your website, for example. Again, in 25 minutes, I could do a whole three-hour talk on each of these platforms. I give you some specific tips and advice. Today, my job is to plant some seeds, to get you thinking, what can we do in the limited amount of time that we have to make the biggest impact? Where do growth and branding intersect? Branding is misunderstood. A lot of people think that this, and I'll, I'll end on this note, a lot of people think that branding is about looking pretty online. Whereas I would argue actually branding is the most powerful business tool that you have available to you. Regardless of where you're at in your career, in the development of your product or service, the most important thing to do is set a goal, work backwards. Small steps are better than no steps. Start to visualize where you want to go with all of this and brand it. Don't just brand who you are today, but brand who you want to become tomorrow and start to actually incorporate that into your visuals and your messaging. I hope that these tools are useful. I have five seconds left, so I probably don't have time for a question. I've given you my social handle, so if you have a question for me, I will respond. What a scary promise. Find me, Twitter, Instagram, or where I'm most active. Again, if I don't have time to answer your question, send it to me. There's a lot of places you could be today, and you chose to be here with me right now and know that I really appreciate that. So thank you.